Um, in a moment, I want to talk about liberty and how different societies look at liberty. Some of them think they got a lot of it. But I just want to take um, just a, like a three or four minute stretch. I want to remind you that um, when you came in, I, I shipped some of these things over. I, I just had a great opportunity to collaborate with the people at the Smithsonian Magazine, and they wanted me to write a whole magazine. I thought, well, that sounds like a lot of work. But uh, they said, you can make your top 20 destinations. And I thought, cool, I'll do that. And I, I just assumed I was going to use my art. And they said, well, we'll take care of the art. And I was kind of jealous about my art, but I'm so thankful they were hard, strong about that because I've never seen my writing paired with real Smithsonian quality art. It's just a, a delight for me as a travel writer to have their uh, mastery of magazines and photo photography and so on. And I liked it so much I bought an extra 50,000 copies of this and I just give them away everywhere I go. So uh, if you'd like one, uh, you grab one of those in the back. Also, I sent over uh, the most important part of my business. I work in Edmonds, just north of Seattle, and we've got 80 people out here through the back door and we're just, uh, just working really hard producing more guidebooks and radio shows. Uh, and TV shows and uh, tours and so on. This is a brochure about our tour program. It's got a DVD in it, which gives you a real frank and candid look at what it's like to travel with us. If you're curious about our tour program, last year we took 400 groups around Europe, uh, small groups, great guides, 20 different itineraries, and we've got an exciting rundown of tours coming up this year. So those are in the back. And um, let's see, why don't we just take, let's just take a five minute stretch, and then uh, we'll sit back down and I'll finish off with about 20 more minutes, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Was they ever rousted in Iran? Sounds like something would happen in a fraternity or something like that. Um, I was, uh, I don't know what you mean by rousted. What do you mean? Oh yeah, we had, I mean, Iran is a very uh, paranoid country with all sorts of overlapping security. And we had a minder with us from the government. Anybody can travel in Iran. It's like traveling in the Soviet Union in the old days. You just have to have a tour and your hotel's arranged. But it's a huge popular destination for Europeans. The Lonely Planet Guide sells great to Iran. There's a new edition out. Our government knew I was going to Iran. It was no problem. Uh, you just, they won't give you a visa unless you line up all your tour. They don't want people running around on their own any more than we want Iranians running around in our country on, on their own, you know. Um, but uh, we had our minder and everybody thinks, you know, were you being like, channeled here and there, but I didn't have any agenda to do a 60 minutes expose on their treatment of Baha'is or terrorism or nuclear power plants. I just wanted to learn about the culture, so I had no problem. Yeah. What's the most unpleasant place I've ever visited? Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, any other, yeah. Do you get a better cultural experience in the big cities or the small towns? You know, I think, you, I think it's, you get a better experience in the small towns. Uh, I just was talking to Paul Theroux. He just wrote a book about Africa. And uh, he's uh, adamant about, you know, if you fly from capital to capital to capital, you're not going to have the richest experience as if you take the bus through the bush and get out in the villages. And wherever I go, if I'm in the villages, I get a richer experience. Uh, by the way, I, I want to remind you that I'm really thankful that my uh, TV show runs on KSPS. And tonight we're going to see a lot of shows. We're going to see two shows on, two brand, you haven't seen these shows. These are brand new. Two shows on Spain, uh, two shows on former Yugoslavia, including a visit to Bosnia and Montenegro, and then a couple shows on Norway, where my heritage is. And I'm just really excited about the new show, so I hope you can watch that. But I'm thankful to be on KSPS, but I was thinking of, in that regard, I interviewed Paul Theroux for my radio show. And uh, I, my show airs on, sa on Saturday morning on your local public radio station. It's an hour each week. We've been doing that now for five years, and it's a chance for me to talk to these kind of people. But Paul Theroux was just adamant about you experience more in the villages. And you know, big cities can be more homogenous and all the same, but you get out of the countryside, and that's where you find the salt of the earth, more traditional kind of uh, you know, Americana for that country. It'd be the same in the United States, I think. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Am I more welcome in the countries because of who I am? Well, you know, if I go to restaurants and hotels and little folk shows and they know who I am, they're going to give me the royal treatment, yeah. And I have to be careful that doesn't mess up my uh, ability to uh, do my research without being seduced and corrupted. Uh, you know, it's fun to, I, like, I let them try to seduce me, I, but uh, I, 
I'll, I'll stay for free in a hotel and then not sleep well and drop it out of the book. I don't owe them anything, you know, so I'm not corruptible that way. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, I don't, when I travel, they don't know who I am. I don't want to waste time being met at the airport by a woman in a dirndl who wants to show me all the cultural cliches. I'd, I'd much rather just get out there and uh, go into the markets and meet people and go to the pubs or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Have I traveled to Colombia? No, I haven't, but I have friends who have traveled in Colombia, and it's uh, uh, notorious for Medellin, right, and all the drug kind of lords and stuff. But right now, a huge change in Colombia, and, and people say it has a, a scary image, but it's completely safe and charming to travel in, actually. Uh, uh, I think it's considered more safe and comfortable than Venezuela. I don't know South America very well, but uh, I think if you look in my radio archives, I interviewed a man and his wife who uh, traveled uh, on their bikes through Colombia in, from village to village and just had a wonderful time. And uh, they didn't know what they'd expect. And I've in, since then met lots of people who have traveled in South America. And I always hear Colombia is uh, it's perfectly safe to go there. I mean, you know, South America is a little more dangerous than Europe just uh, in general. But Colombia is no longer a place that you'd want to steer clear of. Yes, in the back. Your child's one and a half? Yes. I would not want a one and a half year old child in India. I, if, yeah. if somebody had, had a one and a half year old and they asked me where, to, where they would go, I'd say drop by grandma and grandpa's on the way to the airport. <laughs> um, you know, uh, India is so rough and tumble and you want to get, you just want to immerse yourself in India and I, I would be nervous about all sorts of hygiene things and so on in India, you know. I'm sorry, do you have another question? A teenager, India is my favorite country. It's uh, just a mind-blowing place. I, I would say it's a great place to go after you graduate out of high school or something like that. Yeah, but India is pretty, uh, it's a personal thing. I don't write about India or take groups there. I just wouldn't want to have to orchestrate people's happiness in India. It's a very individual thing. I, I'm easy orchestrating your happiness in Ireland, but not India. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, that's a good question. I, seri I thought, what am I going to do to follow up Iran? And I'd, I'd love to do Palestine. I just don't want to get embroiled in that. I'm just wimping out. I, I, I think it would be, people would, it would be very hard to get people to listen to the Palestine-Israeli story the way it needs to be told. I'm still thinking about it. I, I don't think I can get into Gaza. You can't get into Gaza without Israel's permission. And Israel doesn't want to film her in Gaza. So uh, it's a complicated thing. I, there's other stuff I, I would do before that, but that needs to be done. I, I just don't know enough about it to do it justice. Would that be exciting, though? Yeah. Any other thoughts or qu questions? Yeah? Do I ever hear about Americans living and working in Europe? Oh, yeah. How are Americans accepted in Europe? Americans are accepted in Europe wonderfully. Europe wants Americans to come in and to renovate these little, you know, rundown fixer-uppers in Tuscany and so on. They have policies that encourage that. Uh, they're part of the community. I always, I'm skeptical that somebody can move in uh, you're in Provence style, you know, uh, or under the Tuscan sun style and be a, you know, suddenly be a, a connoisseur of that culture. But if you have the right attitude, if you learn the language and you get to know people and you're part of the community, you're part of the community. And after a few years, you're respected as part of the community. Other people go there and they just want a change in weather but not a change in culture. And they live a parallel world. All over southern Spain, there are uh, expat communities that are just garishly uh, ethnocentric. It's just Belgians here, Irish there, Danes here, Germans there, Brits there. And they have their own radio stations, their own schools, their own shops. Spaniard comes into town and they complain you can't even find Spanish on a menu. Uh, so there's that extreme case. Uh, but for the Americans that want to, you know, adopt a country and retire in Europe or something, it happens all the time and people love it. Yes, in the back. How do you as a person of faith uh, reconcile some of the social justice issues you must see in your travels in terms of 
the abundance that we have in our country and the lack of abundance in other countries, particularly among certain classes? <laughs> That's a good question. How does a Christian who cares about economic justice handle all of that stuff, I guess? Uh, one issue right off the bat is, okay, I'm going down to El Salvador for my holiday and I'm gonna spend as much going down there and back as the guy I'm gonna photograph spend earns in three years to feed his kids, you know? And I'm just going down there for kicks. Now, is that good stewardship? And um, I'd say, if you learn and come back and live with empathy with those people, it's very good stewardship. And I feel it's a good investment. Uh, but if I go down there and I just go to some resort and I enjoy golfing and, and fruity drinks and never meet a local person and come home, having left money in foreign adventures in that country and I come back not having any empathy for those people, then I think that's lousy stewardship. Um, I'm very, we'll talk about it in a few minutes here, I'm impressed by the gap between rich and poor and how Americans have a tough time with that. And I think um, it's an interesting thing from a, a Christian or a person of faith point of view, how ignorance can be so blissful. And people choose to be uh, unknowing about that. And I, I don't have much uh, respect for that. I, I have a hunger to know what it's like. I don't, I don't need a guilt trip, I'm not guilty. I just wanna be engaged and caring and learning and part of the solution instead of you know, ignorantly, in, ignorantly blissful. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's a very important issue. Question here. <laughs> I always wonder about that, what Canadians think when they see somebody with a Canadian flag that's not Canadian. All right, um, all right, these are, it's fun to, uh, one more question here, yeah. Can Europeans recognize you? Yeah, they can, they can recognize you in the dead of night. <laughs> they can, they, I don't know what it is, but when you come into town, they know there's an American. And I don't know what it is, but, but there's something about us, they just know that's an American. Uh, part of it might be we've got a camera bouncing on our belly and we're just going, wow, that's big, that's old, wow, wow. You know, but um, they just know who we are. And I don't try to hide the fact that I'm an American because it's futile. I, I like to dress appropriately and you know try to melt in, but I'm not disguising the fact that I'm an American. I want to not be an, a judgmental or ethnocentric American. I want to celebrate their way of life while I'm there. And it's really fun because I go home and I'm thankful I'm not having to be like that or I incorporate a little bit of that in my lifestyle. It's a cool kind of way to travel. Is there a question here? Yeah. Well, the beautiful American smile is interesting, especially when you're in a place like Belfast, because you just notice bad dentition, right? <laughs> you go to some countries and there's not a set of braces in the whole country, and it's just kind of, and also, you go to some countries and you just feel like, God, they have terrible diets here. You, uh, I won't say which countries, but you, you just people look like all they do is eat French fries. And uh, it's very interesting just to travel around, get into these communities, and, and uh, try to observe and see what makes them tick and what might they do a little different. Okay.